collapse. Now, I'm not going to try to interpret where that word is pointing at because there are a whole lot of things that could collapse. We could be looking at weather anomalies. We could be looking at potholes and sinkholes collapsing out from under houses and cars and whatever. We can see collapses of buildings when the tornadoes hit them. We can see collapses of the finances, the financial system. We can see collapses in people's personal lives where things just start falling apart and unraveling. However God wants to say this, we're going to follow his lead. But right now, we're going to start with the words God led me to read. I'm going to start with Amos chapter 5. And then we're going to go to Isaiah chapter 5. Hear ye the word which I take up against you, even a lamentation, O house of Israel. The virgin of Israel is fallen. She shall no more rise. She is forsaken upon her land. There is none to raise her up. For thus saith the Lord God, the city that went out by a thousand shall leave an hundred, and that went out, went forth by an hundred shall leave ten to the house of Israel. For thus saith the Lord unto the house of Israel, Seek ye me, ye shall live, but seek not Bethel, nor enter into Gilgal, and pass not to Beersheba. For Gilgal shall surely go into captivity, and Bethel shall come to naught. Seek the Lord, and ye shall live, lest he break out like a fire in the house of Joseph, and devour it, and there be none to quench it. Ye who turn judgment to wormwood, and leave off righteousness in the earth, Seek him that maketh the seven stars of Orion and turneth the shadow of death into morning and maketh the dark day with night. Isaiah chapter 5, starting at verse 5, and now go to, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge thereof and it shall be eaten up and break down the wall thereof and it shall be trodden down. And I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned nor digged, but there shall come up briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain, no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah his pleasant plant. And he looked for judgment, but behold, oppression, for righteousness, but behold, a cry. Woe unto them that join house to house, that lay field to field, till there be no place, that they may be placed alone in the midst of the earth. In mine ears, said the Lord of hosts of truth, many houses shall be desolate, even great and fair without inhabitant. Yea, ten acres of vineyard shall yield one bath, and the seed of an homer shall yield an epath. An epoch. Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink, that continue until night, till wine inflame them, and the harp and the vial, the tabret and pipe and, and wine are in their feast. But they regard not the work of the Lord, neither consider the operation of his hands. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst. Therefore, hell has enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure and their glory and their multitude and their pomp and he that rejoices shall descend into it and the mean man shall be brought down, and the mighty man shall be humbled, and the eyes of the lofty shall be humbled. But the Lord of hosts shall be exalted in judgment, and God <clears throat> that is holy shall be sanctified in righteousness. Then shall the lambs, verse 17, then shall the lambs feed their 
feed after their manner, and the waste places of the fat ones shall strangers eat. Woe unto them that draw iniquity with cords of vanity, and sin, as it were, with a cart rope, that say, let him make speed and hasten his work, that we may see it, and let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw nigh and come, that we may know it. Woe unto them, verse 20, that call evil good, and good evil, that put darkness for light, and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Mm, mm, mm. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteous of the righteous, the righteousness of the righteous from him. Therefore, as the fire devoureth the stubble and the fire consumeth the chaff, so their root shall be as rottenness, and the blossom shall go up as dust, because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts, and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Therefore is the anger of the Lord kindled against his people, and he has stretched forth his hand against them, and has smitten them, and the hills did tremble, and their carcasses were torn in the midst of the streets. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Listen, let me stop there for a minute. Something that, when we talk about collapse, the word collapse, and I looked it up, and a lot of us see in the news sinkholes and the earth opening its mouth, that's basically what this just described. And I, I didn't even see it when I was reading it. I just saw it now. That's crazy. Huh. But when the earth opens up its mouth and the evil ones fall down into the pit, so to speak, what we don't realize is no matter what you're standing on, help me with this, Lord, no matter what you're standing on, you could be walking in your house on solid ground on a house built on a cement foundation and God can hiss at the earth and all that's under you can collapse and open up and you and your house can fall through. So for those of you who have it like that, for those of you who are making your money off of blood money, for those of you who are getting rich off of the oppression of others through human trafficking, through dealing drugs, through pouring wine and hard liquor throughout the neighborhoods of your choice so that you can slowly do a, a mass destruction. For those of you who are cheating people and, and playing with fine print and contracts so that people can be done out of their hard labor the, the fruits of their labor, because you know how to manipulate the system so that you get rich at their expense. God is not blind. He's not crazy, crippled, or deaf. He knows what you're doing. And judgment is going to fall hard on you and yours. Because God loves his babies. God has a heart for the poor. God has a heart for widows. God has a heart for orphans, for the strangers, for those who are homeless. God has a heart for the poor in spirit and the feeble in mind. God has a heart for the broken ones, for the captives, for those that are bound. He has a heart for those that mourn. And while you're playing your little money games, God's going to show you what his heart is towards you. That season is coming quickly. And it's going to happen suddenly. And you're going to look around and wonder what just happened. Because when God aims at you, baby, he doesn't miss. 
But while he's aiming at you, he'll be girding up his babies. He'll be girding up the victims of your treachery. He'll be girding up the poor, who the defenseless, the ones who have no voice, no power rising up on their defense, on their behalf. And while you guys are looking out for the rich, the fat cats, the ones that are out there doing all their treachery, I'm not talking about God's people who are rich. They're rich because God made them rich. I'm talking about you treacherous ones who couldn't care less about God or his people, who couldn't care less about the poor, the hungry, the homeless, the widows, the orphans. You could care less about the disabled, about the veterans. You could care less about them. As long as your pockets are taken care of. Well, guess what, baby cakes? God's got a payday for you. And you don't see it coming. But while you're sitting there at your fancy dinner table singing the song about peace and safety, sudden destruction will come on you. And you will have nowhere to run to, nowhere to hide. You cannot run from God, cannot outrun him, and you cannot outsmart him. And the fact that you don't believe in him He's going to show you just how real he is. Colossians chapter 3. This is what we do, God's people, to make sure we stay in God's good graces. Because when God brings judgment, we must be extra careful extra careful not to mingle ourselves in situations where we can get caught up in what God calls the whirlwind. Mortify, therefore, this is Colossians chapter 3, verse 5, and on down. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. For those of you who don't know what mortify means, it means stop it, kill it, bring it to a halt, destroy it, forsake it. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Talking about your body, your whole, your whole essence of what you do physically and natural in the norm. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence and covetousness, which is idolatry. Concupiscence is a form of unbridled sexual, lustful desires and, particip and activity, participation in those activities. Inordinate affection is uncontrolled anything. There, there are no limits. It's like you go for whatever you want to go for, whether it's for animals, same sex, whatever you want to do, it's your thing, do what you want to do. That's what inordinate affection means. A father's lust after his son or his daughter, a daughter's lust after her mother or father, whichever way it goes, that's called incest. That's all in the category of inordinate affection. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Now, let me say this. I know a lot of you hear about the Illuminati and all that stuff. I don't know that much about it. But I have seen cases where they, they show that parents introduce their kids into sexual promiscuity. Doesn't matter which direction it takes. They think it's all fun and they think it's all cute. That's very dangerous. You're sacrificing your own child. Verse 7. In the which ye also walked sometime when ye lived in them. But now ye also put off all these. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man and his deeds and have put on the new man 
which is renewed <clears throat> in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. Now, verse 12, put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, and long suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. You have no right not to forgive. So for the children of God, that's your guideline. Stay in your lane. That's one of your lanes right there. You stay there. You live there. You eat there. You thrive there. And you will be able to stay to remain in God's good graces. You want to be in the ark of safety. You want to be under the covering. You want to be under the shadow of the almighty so that no matter what comes, if a thousand fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, it shall not come nigh thee. It won't come near you. It won't touch you. Can't touch this. Dee, 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 dee. Can't touch you, baby, because you got the blood of Jesus on you. You can't have the blood of Jesus on you if you're not in Christ. But he is your protection. He is your inoculation. He is your provider. He is your miracle worker. He is your healer. He is your safety net. He is your, sanct your sanctuary. And he is your safe haven. Amongst a whole lot of other things that I don't have the time to list right now. So you have to remember, knowing that we're going into this season of judgment, let me share with you some of what came to my mind when I was getting ready for this. Don't be surprised if violence starts breaking out in the most bizarre places. Don't be surprised. Tempers are at an all-time high. Demons are bouncing off the walls and the chandeliers having a party over this society right now. They're driving kids into sexual promiscuity that most of us adults haven't even seen, let alone participated in. He's driving racism up the wall. I mean, people are in their hot tempers and their hatred for anybody that doesn't look like them. There's so much treachery in the legal system that the judges and the cops and the and the and the, the investigators and they're all rubbing elbows and not all of them. There are good ones in there. But there are so many corrupt, there's so much corruption that we have nowhere to turn but up. God is your only protection. I guarantee you that. But only if you're in him and his son. This is coming a time where it's going to be so scary. It, it's hard to realize how things are happening right now. But we have to remember that when God brings judgment, we cannot fear, but we must fear God enough to stay on the straight and narrow. We have to really dot our I's and cross our T's and through here. A good prayer to pray is, Lord, what you hate, put it in my spirit to hate. What you know is a lie, put it in my spirit not to believe or trust. I don't care how much propaganda they put out. I don't care how many people they bribe. And how many people get penalized for not lining up with the lie? Put it in my spirit not to trust if you are totally against the game plan. They're shoving on people. Open my eyes to the treachery. 
so that my skin crawls when I hear their voices and hear their lies because you're telling me in my spirit, don't buy into it. Don't cooperate with that, whatever that is for the moment. Give me heightened discernment so I know the difference between a person and a demon. Let me discern the demon, but not toss away the person. All right. Isaiah 13. The burden of Babylon, which Isaiah the son of Amos did see. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain and exalt the voice unto them. Shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. I have commanded my sanctified ones. I have also called my mighty ones for mine anger, even them that rejoice in my highness. The noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. The Lord of hosts mustered the host of the battle. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven, even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. Howl ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt. And they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate. And he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. Wow. Woo. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. And sun shall be darkened in his going down and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. Don't look at that just physically, y'all. That doesn't mean that, you know, we're not going to see the sun, we're not going to see the moon and the stars are going to disappear. No, what that means is we're entering into a very dark, dark, dark time. And I'm going to tell you, as dark as it is, those of us who belong to God will live and thrive in his light. That darkness is not for you or me. That darkness is for those who are the enemies of God, not us. Someone told me a story. And I'm going to share it. It's just popping in my mind right now. It's a perfect illustration of what I'm saying. There was a woman who was driving her car. I think Pat told me this. There was a woman who was driving her car. And she heard a, you know, like a train whistle or something. Oh, no, it was a, it sounded like a tornado warning going off in her head. And Everything started going dark, 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 dark on her. And she said she had to pull over and park because she couldn't see to do anything else. So she parks and she calls for help. And when uh, um, I think a lady came next to the car to see if she was all right. That's what it was. And when she asked her how she was, the woman said, oh, I'm just waiting. It's so dark out here. I can't see to drive. And the woman said, it's dark. Do you see that? To that woman, it was dark. But to the woman standing, looking in the window, it was bright daylight. It wasn't dark at all. That is exactly how it's going to be for the sinner, for those that mock God, that mock the crucifixion of Christ, that blaspheme his name. You're not going to know what's going on. You're going to be caught up in confusion. You're going to be panic stricken. You're going to be at your wit's end. And you're going to wonder, what do I do? What do I do? Where do I turn? Where do I turn? And when you look for the government, or you look for this one, or you look for that politician, or you look for that drug dealer, whoever you're looking for, for help, they're not going to be there for you, baby, because they're running just like you are. 
but God's people will live in his glorious light. We won't be blinded by the dark because we're not living in the dark. We're not ruled by the dark. Verse 11. And I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogance of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. Verse 13, therefore I will shake the heavens and the earth. The earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger. And it shall be as the chaste roe and as a sheep that no man taketh up. They shall every man turn to his own people and flee every one to his own land. Every one that is found shall be thrust through and every one that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished. Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them, which shall not regard silver. And as for gold, they shall not delight in it. Look at the weather anomalies as a prophetic sign. Look at what's happening in different places, the way people are behaving, their weird, strange activities, their weird behavior. When you look at fights breaking out in the most bizarre places, when you look at at people killing their families and not understanding why they were under an influence that they didn't understand. Like, like one of the guys was talking about even church leaders, some of them are committing suicide. There's a spirit of suicide that has been unleashed like a flood, like a tsunami. And those of you who have loved ones who are given to suicide, you got to pray this prayer. I bind the spirit of suicide in the name of Jesus. And I command that spirit to leave my loved one, their name, alone in the name of Jesus and stay as far away from them as the east is from the west. You've got to take authority. You don't just watch things happen. Christianity is not a spectator sport. It's a battle. And God is calling you to battle. He is calling you to take the authority God has given you. You don't just sit back. Oh, did you hear what happened on the news? Mm -mm. That show is a trip. So what you going to do about it? The power's in your hand and in your mouth. What are you going to do about it? Yes, we're in a season of judgment. But that doesn't mean you roll over and play dead. Not God's people. Not the time to roll over and play dead. You battle with your mouth. Hmm? You battle in the spirit. Spiritual warfare. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. It's time to pull down these strongholds of human trafficking, of drug addiction, of alcoholic addiction, of suicides, of murders, of molestations, of rapes, of oppression, of the lies, of legal treachery. And call on God to expose every perpetrator out there that's trying to turn this country inside and out and sucking on the very blood of the people who have no strength to fight back for themselves. Putting people in prison so that they can make money, finding any old excuse, throwing some folks under the bus, under the jail, under the prisons, while others get released constantly because there's money exchanging hand. God sees that. But I say to God's people, be encouraged because you're not in that number. You're not in the dark that you should grope around in fear. We're the people of God called by his name, called out 
out of dark and delivered from shame. One holy race, saints, every one. Because of the blood of Christ, Jesus, his son. God bless you guys. Be encouraged. Stay in God's word. Stay in God's face. Put your ear to God's bosom and ask God's bosom and his heart, his heart throb to become your heart throb. What's important to him to be important to you. What's not important to him, what's frivolous to him, let it not count to you. That you be totally in line, totally lined up, aligned with him in the spirit, in mind, in heart, in soul. And that everything you do in your life, yeah, you got a right to enjoy your life. But remember, you're here for a purpose. And it's not just so you can be happy. Is everybody happy? No baby cakes. It's to make sure that you are doing your part. It may be a small part. But in God's eyes, what you see as small might be great. So don't measure by your own understanding. Just do what God told you to do. Be what God told you to be. Right there in his word. You don't have to guess at it. But you do have to read it. And you will remain in the ark of safety. Out of danger's way. And God can warn you if you're putting your ear to hear. Listen, some of you, you wonder why do some Christians get caught up in the floods and the tsunamis and the this and the that. I'm not faulting them. I'm really not. What I'm saying is there are times that we're not asking. We're not looking. We're not discerning. There's writing on the wall. And we're watching all in the family. The earth is shaking and we're taking sleeping pills so we don't have to be worried about it. And your sleeping pills take all kind of phases. It can be a, a literal sleeping pill or it could be sexual activity. Or you could be caught up in work, 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 work because that dummies you down. Or you can get caught up in this entertainment and that show and that concert and this, that, and the other. Hanging out, whatever your little sleeping pill is. And a lot of times, even though you're in Christ, you find yourself dummying yourself down because you don't want to deal with what's going on. When you can't hear, when you cannot hear the sirens, when you cannot hear the warning signals, you can't hear the news, you can't hear the warnings that God is, is unctioning in your spirit. When you miss out, baby, you can be in danger's way and not know it. Why? Because you didn't hear it. Why? Because you're caught up in all your own little personal noise and busyness. And I'm going to end the message with this. This is strictly for God's people. I miss my time with you. These moments together. I want to be with you each day, but it hurts me when you say you're too busy. Busy trying to serve me. Well, how can you serve me if your spirit's empty? There's a longing in my heart. Wanting more than just a part of you. It's true. I miss my time with you. We're all guilty. I'm guilty. All of us are guilty of not spending as much time as we should with the Lord. But the more time you spend with God, I guarantee you, and the more time I spend with God, the more we'll be available to hear his warning signals and his instructions so that we can avoid all of the dangers that are coming our way. We know when to duck. We know when to stay in. We know when not to go out. When it's safe to go and when it's not. 
And through all of this shaking and all of this baking and all of this quivering and all of this rolling around and turmoil and all this stuff and all this whirlwind blasting all over, we will know we can stay in the basement of God being safe from the storm above because we're safe in his salvation. God bless you. As we leave the sanctuary, as we go our separate ways, may God's favor rest upon thee. May he cover you with his grace. Whoa, I'll be praying for you. Whoa. Please keep praying for me, me, yeah. May God keep us all in the palm of his hands. Till we're together again. Together again.